Hello, Internet. I'm UD on YT. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is where I talk about literally whatever I want to talk about. Um, sometimes it's about my own life, and sometimes it's about other people's lives. And I felt like, well, first, a little life update, which, by the way, do you like the contacts? If you can even tell, I'm wearing contacts. Uh, color Addict, color lychee green dailies. They're actually pretty comfortable. Um, I usually can only tolerate Olens, but okay, Colorado coming through. So, Trisha Paytas is pregnant, and oh, didn't even give you the life update. The life update was I did a KET booster. Some of you might be like, what's a KET booster? Um, you know, just search KET A mine. Yeah, I did a booster of that for the sadness. Um, I knew I was having the sadness because waking up in the middle of the night, having nightmares, waking up, like the first thing I'm thinking of when I'm waking up is instant anxiety. Um, couldn't concentrate. Uh, not interested in making a video. That's like the number one sign that you have the sadness is when things that you used to love or that you really enjoy, like suddenly you're just not interested. And I just thought, mm, I don't care about anything, but yeah, that's that's the problem. You don't care about anything. So anyway, I got a booster, feeling good. I felt like reacting to this because um, also I took my vitamins. I took my vitamins, so I have energy. And I felt like reacting to this because this is something that, you know, a lot of the girlies, a lot of my girlies were thinking about, you know, pregnancy and all the different ways that it can be done. Now, I personally... I really think I'm going to do a surrogate mother. I just have an absolutely no desire to experience pregnancy. Um, it sounds horrible. It sounds awful. I don't want to experience that. Now, listen, if it happens, I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? If you, if it happens, it happens. I'll go through it. But, um, you know, ideally, I would be making that coin, be making that bag to pay someone else to do it for me. How about that? Um, but Trisha Paytas is very excited that she's pregnant and I don't listen. I don't enjoy watching Trisha Paytas. That's why we're reacting via Pearl Swirl. That's the woman that you see on the left hand side of the screen. Um, I don't care. I, I like, I personally do not like Trisha Paytas. I don't like her and I'm not interested in, um, a lot of her drama, drama here lately. It's not even drama. Like she got married. <laughs> Like I, I'm not, I'm not interested in what color her dress was or who was invited or whatever. I, I'm so sorry, y'all. I do not give a shit. But, um, I it's worth talking about her pregnancy because the way she frames pregnancy is really weird. Um, and I just want to point it out so that, so that other people can be aware of it because, I, I think, and. Our society here in the West, well, honestly, I feel like it's this way in the East. It's Africa, the East. <laughs> but it's this way in a lot of places that the way people view pregnancy and, and raising children is it's a little problematic. Let's just start the video and I'll start, I'll explain. I'll explain as we go along. Excuse me if I skip parts, like I just don't care about some of these things, but I just, I wanna get my point across that the way she talks about pregnancy is kind of weird and it's not considered, it's not considered weird. Um, I kinda, I guess I wanna make a social commentary. Let, let's, let's get into Pearl Swirl, by the way, if you're not subscribed to her, if you enjoy these type of videos, like reaction videos, then you will love her channel. Go check her out. And all blue. Us Tauruses do nothing out of vain. I mean, we, we, we do everything for a reason, almost. I never thought I would make this video. If it's a so girl, I'll be very surprised. I even visualize this ever happening. She wants a boy. She wants a boy. Yeah, I think she wants a boy, too. Are you pregnant? I actually found out a few weeks ago what my excitement is. Still looking at this, it's just like, what? I am pregnant. Yeah. More ways than one. Okay. And she's. I've been told in more ways. She, <laughs> she's 
she double checked, triple checked. Oh my god, quadruple checked to make sure. Let's just keep, let's just keep real. Now, um, if you don't know Trisha Paytas's history, she talks about it in this video. If you want to see the actual video yourself, you can. And she talks about how she was told for all these years that she was unable to get pregnant. So on the surface, I'm like, oh, I see why she's so excited. She always thought that she couldn't get pregnant, but she's pregnant. But the issue comes when she talks about how she had been trying to get pregnant this whole time. And she'll talk about how, let's see if she talks about well, And I just like had the most peace I've ever felt in my, in yeah, okay. Because it's been her dream to get pregnant. I don't know if we'll get to the part where, uh, right. I know some of you are like, I just want to see a reaction, but she talks about somewhere in this video that she has been trying to get pregnant with people, with men who did not want to have a child with her. Four weeks pregnant. Miss Mayo! Four weeks right now. Um, that was that first reaction. Um, and that's, that's an issue because Like, I can't find a part, but it's like, when I heard her say that, I'm like, wait, rewind, rewind that. And she said that several times. She said it on the Frenemies podcast as well, that she had been trying to get impregnated by men who did not want to have a child with her. So I'm like, how did that happen? Did, did you like coerce them to go in you raw? Did you lie to them that you're on birth control? Like you did something shysty. Because <laughs> if a dude does not want to have children with you, he he's not just going to willingly impregnate you. I'm just like, for, wait, 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 for, wait, a, wait a minute. Wait, I'm like, wait a minute, girl. What have you been doing? That's problem number one. What have you been doing this whole time? You said you've been trying to get pregnant. And now you're so excited that now you're pregnant with somebody who actually wants to have a child with you. So wh what 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 was the alternative that you've been doing? For this at 25. So See, this is why I don't like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, this is why I don't even want to react to the whole video. I don't like Trisha Paytas. I don't, like, that is gross to me. That's just gross to me. told me that I was never going to have kids. Um, at 25, really? I was like, IVF yeah, is going to be your best route because your tubes are just, to, to okay, um, um I done the HSG. I uh, this is where me and females disconnect. I forget that, and you know what? I've actually had some of my friends be like, no, girl, you wanna have your own kids. You wanna have your own kids. I I just feel if you have money and you can you can't have kids, hey, you can freeze your eggs, somebody else can have There's a kid. There's so many like, options. They're kind of painful. I would like to freeze my eggs so that you know I can get a surrogate, but the process like, guys, all they have to do is jerk it into a cup. But for women, freezing your eggs is such an ordeal. And I have, I don't like things. I don't like medical, surgical things near my hoo-ha at all. So I don't know how I'm going to do it, girl. <laughs> if or when I do it, it's, I'm going to say take as many eggs as possible because I'm not doing this again. Um it's such an ordeal. And then, then to put the eggs back inside you to impregnate you, that's also another ordeal. I would rather somebody else go through that. Somebody else who, you know, can tolerate it. I can't. But I get it. I, I guess there's that connection. Again, I don't have kids. Hell, I don't even have a love. So yeah, there's something about, you know, replicating your DNA that, you know, humans have been like really into it for millennia. Um, I feel it too. Like, I feel like I, I would like to have a child with my DNA and my partner's DNA. I don't have the, you know, technical terms for why we like that. Why do humans like it? But I mean, that we're, we're organisms. We're biological organisms, like, from the beginning, from the first um, multi-celled organisms. Shoot, from the first single-celled organism that was, like, 
that was the only that was the only to do that was the only task on to do on the to-do list is to proliferate yourself so I think you know that's just that's just part of being an organism is you want your DNA to be reproduced it's kind of weird it's kind of weird to think about you don't even have to be an organism you can be a virus I want the exact same thing it's so weird life is weird so I guess it's that connection right I'll say like, okay okay I see this being 20 that's so messed up and she looks so happy. I love it. She test um, uh, like, seven days yes. after my period in December, December like twenty. Okay, so the HSG test cleared her tubes. Here's problem number two. Um, she's making it. She's making it sound like the HSG test solved all her problems. What she has said in the past is that she has taken an HSG test and this showed that there was significant scarring. Th th that's what she has said in the past, like before this. Before this, she said she's taken the HSG test, I think at least two times, and there was scarring. The HSG test will increase your chances of getting pregnant by 30%. Um, however, it doesn't just remove scars. <laughs> it doesn't remove scars. So um, I, I just want to, the, my problem is that there's some misinformation here. There can be misinterpretation and misunderstandings. Um, I don't think that HSG test solved all of her problems. It, I'm sure it helped, but other things had to come into play to heal whatever scarring that she claims that she had in the past. I, I feel like now she's trying to act like there was just no more scars. I'm sh there's, there were scars. You, like you, you don't just d disappear all your scars, but she has also been on a weight loss journey. Um, she's also, I think been under less stress. That sounds loud. She's been under less stress. These things can help with healing things in the body. So I'm sure it was a multitude of things that helped her to whatever needed to be fixed, <laughs> get fixed. Um, in addition to the HSG. So I just wanted to solve that problem of the misinformation if you know more about it leave me a comment as well so more people can like just just have more well-rounded information about how it works six three days later i ovulated and the first month i got pregnant she's so happy about this now she talks about later in the video sometime in the video that she has wanted to be pregnant all of her life, and this is just a dream come true. And this is the third issue I have. Um, that not that I have an issue with Trisha because I feel like she's not the only woman who thinks this way. Um, and I I don't under I don't comprehend it because I've never felt this way. She, well, one being pregnant is part of her fantasy. This is a fantasy. She feels like she is living a fantasy. She, she reality for her isn't actually real. Uh, I'm saying this based on what she has told us in the past about um, her dissociations and her disorders and how she, how she understands life and how she understands herself in life. And reality just doesn't make sense to her. What makes more sense is our fantasies, living fantasies. Hence, she makes these music videos. She loves dressing up. She loves all these things because she feels like she gets to be something for a moment. Like, she doesn't have a good sense of who she is, but if she can dress up like Gerard Way, she gets to be something. You know what I mean? And pregnancy is just another costume that she gets to put on and be something so that's her personal issue but I feel like that 
I think there are women out there who like the idea of being pregnant too. I personally don't get that, but I know in Trisha's case, based on her history, it's deeper than just liking the idea of it. She's glowing because this is a fantasy come true for her. But the other thing about it is she feels like having a child would complete her. Um, that to me, that's weird to society. That's not weird. Like to society, that's normal. Um, people get pregnant on purpose for the wrong reasons, you know, like all the time people are like, I want to get pregnant. So I have somebody who loves me. I want to get pregnant because it might help my relationship with my partner mature. Um, I want to get pregnant. So I'm just not alone. Like people, want to get pregnant for reasons other than like the child (laughs) like when you ask them why do you want to be pregnant they don't they never mention I want to raise a happy healthy person (laughs) who contributes to society like they they never say that's never like one of the reasons (laughs) that's not one of the reasons that they say to me that's weird I can't I don't relate you know I think Pearl will mention Listen, I'm skipping through because I just, (laughs) I get, I think honestly, I just have the video on screen. So there's like something other than just my face. So you can like visualize Trisha, (laughs) but, um, Pearl Swirl also kind of, she mentions in her video that she just doesn't relate. I also don't relate. I don't relate to this idea of wanting to have a baby for reasons other than having healthy help a happy healthy family <laughs> like it doesn't boost my self esteem it doesn't i i don't imagine like when i think of it the thought of it doesn't make me feel more esteemed it doesn't make me feel more valuable it doesn't make me feel more loved it, I, I don't i don't feel anything <laughs> there's nothing there i just i just want to have Children who are happy, who are raised well, who get to learn who they are and experience existing in the most beautiful way possible. I don't know. Like, I want to I wanna have a big family because, in my experience, big families can hold a lot of love for the people in that family. You know what I mean? But Trisha wants to have this child because it fits her fantasy. Here's another problem that I have. What happens when the child doesn't fit your fantasy? You know, that child is its own person. The child is going to have a personality in the womb. Like, I've never been pregnant before, but just let me know. Just let me know in the comments. You can tell what your kid is like. You can tell what your kid will be like as an adult when they're in the womb. Like you can feel like once that fetus is like a human, <laughs> like once that fetus is like, you know what I'm saying? It's kicking. It's doing stuff. It's turning around. It's gulping em- embryonic fluid. It's it's doing its thing in there. Once that fetus becomes like a person that is vibing within you. You can feel it and you can tell what kind of person it's going to be. And what happens if your miracle baby, your fantasy baby doesn't live up to the fantasy that you wanted? You know, I'm watching Euphoria and you see all different types of personalities and problems with the young characters in Euphoria. You see substance abuse you see relationship issues you see self-esteem issues you see bad things happen to your child you see your child do the bad things and all of these things happen like against your will as a mother (laughs) like your child will exist and do things against your will nobody has a child And is hoping for them to become addicted to substances. But 
because your child is their own person, it's something that can happen. You know, nobody has a child and, and wishes for them to be a monster, but it can happen. And I used to, when I was younger and I didn't understand a lot of things, I used to think people are the way that they are because, because of their upbringing. But now that I'm older, I understand that sometimes you are just the way you are. And also, because you are the way you are, things that happen to you get interpreted a different way. Like, um, for example, um, there's this author named Gabrielle Bernstein, and she talks about how a negative story that she would tell herself in her head is how she's never good enough. She's not good enough. She's not good enough. She's not good enough. This happened because... Um, her father was working all the time and the only time he would pay her attention was when she was winning like awards, like at the school play or something. Then he paid attention. So then she felt like that meant, that means I have to constantly perform and win. Otherwise I'm not good enough. Right. And that's how she interpreted because she's her own person. Um, myself, when I was growing up, my father was also working all the time. I never felt like I was not good enough for him. I I always felt like he loves me. Like regardless. And all I, all he wants for me is to for me to do my best. You know what I mean? But I'm a different type of person. I'm a different person. Right? Like you can put two people in the same situation. I have the, I had this one friend in college. She was a twin. She was like I grew up with my my brother, my twin brother. I'm now in private college and he is in a gang. You are already your own person. And as things happen to you, you interpret them and react to them in a different way. And sometimes it's just not in your control. Like sometimes there's no amount of raising somebody right that you can do to prevent them from making a bad decision or even just being a bad person to other people. And it's like, <laughs> are you able to show this human that you caused? Are you able to show that you love them? Even if they're not what you hoped that they would be. <sighs> I'm sure many of you can relate, you know, Parents wanted you to be a doctor or an engineer or a politician or they wanted you to go to this school or do that thing. Or the movie Encanto, Abuela expected all the children to have a gift. Maribel didn't live up to that expectation. Bruno didn't live up to that to the expectation. Are you able to show this person that you love them even if they don't fit? the fantasy in your head. That's my number one question, which, of course, it's not really any of my business. Like, it's not my business how Trisha raises her child or what they do. I'm just curious because when you don't feel loved, it creates a lot of mental health problems. And... um one thing to think about when you do have mental health issues is that it's a high chance your kid will have similar issues. And that is biological, but it's also because of you. You have those issues in the way you, that manifests and how you treat your yourself and your child. It's cause, because it's not just how you treat your child, but it's also how your child sees you treating yourself in your home and other people, <laughs> right? Like my parents kept all of our important documents in this fire safety box, this box that's fireproof, flood proof, has a lock. So when I became an adult, I kept my documents in a fire safety case, right? If my parents had kept our stuff in just a simple file cabinet, then I would have kept myself in a file cabinet. You model your parents. 
And sometimes you reject them. You reject something that they do completely. And sometimes you just default to what your parents did. And the, um, yeah, we're not reacting to the video anymore. I'm just talking. <laughs> but Pearl, if you watch Pearl Swirl's video, she talks about this. This is a concern of hers. Um, she thinks about it, I think about it as well. You will pass those things on to your kid. The other aspect is everybody receives love differently, right? Um, my mother, she receives love with gifts. If you give her a gift, it makes her feel loved. So she would always give me gifts. And I, didn't, I don't care about gifts. What I care about is having quality time and feeling accepted by you, which most of the time I can't have. <laughs> like uh, as I became an adult and I understood this, I learned to accept, well, my mom shows love with gift giving and that's how she receives love. And she doesn't yet comprehend how to show love in different ways that I like. Uh, can I accept her? Can I accept this person as they are? If the answer is no, then that's why people have estranged family members. If the answer is, yeah, I can, I can handle that. I, I love her still. Then you love her. So is Trisha able to recognize the way her child wants to be loved? Is Trisha able to accept people for who they are despite them not living up to her expectations? I mean, with her husband, that's one thing. You know, you can yell, scream, shout, be toxic to each other. You can do all of that. And it's accepted because you're both adults. You're both adults in the situation, but when there's a child involved, the child doesn't even doesn't even know what that is. The child is just coming to grasp with, what are, what is this thing that I'm feeling? Oh, that's an emotion, right? The kid doesn't understand these things. So it it feels yucky. It feels like you know, how are you going to model that to the child? So again, these are just questions that I have. It, it's not my business. Trisha has no obligation to answer them for any of us. But we're going to ask. We're going to be curious. I don't know if this is for everybody. Okay, let's see if there's anything I can react to. Sometimes I have to experience it or I have to like be in it by myself alone to really get what it's like. You know what I mean? To where I, it's very hard for me to connect with people that have kids. It, I'm not going to lie to you. It's very, very hard. Yes, I can make it look very, you know, like I love your kids. I love, like I like, because I like being around kids. I do. Um, But the responsibility of it all, just it's something about that. It's just like, ugh can't do that shit by myself bro <laughs> yeah having children i can't do that huge, by myself it's a huge responsibility that's why i'm like how are y'all just thinking of all the happy moments how are y'all just thinking of all the the fun things for you the baby shower and the joy of having a baby and it's so cute and how are you only thinking about those good things like are you not also thinking about you're responsible for this human being responsible for their life for their upbringing for their self-esteem yeah for a few years you are going to be solely responsible for that child's self-esteem it's like shoot i'm sometimes i need to work on my self-esteem shoot <laughs> but yeah for a while you're gonna you are going to be responsible for providing that child with esteem like, how do people not think about that? How do you not think about how are you going to discipline the child? I think about that. How am I going to discipline this child? Like, oh my, like, that is a huge question for me. How do you teach right from wrong without, like, traumatizing your child? <laughs> is trauma necessary? 
like there's a th- there's theories out there that are like no some, a little bit of trauma is necessary is it i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know like that's a huge like yo like how do people not think about that it's more than just providing food shelter making sure to go to school bathing them cleaning up their messes it's more than that you are literally responsible for the ego their ego their sense of self is in your hands what happens when somebody who doesn't have their own sense of self becomes responsible for somebody else's these are just questions it's just questions i think about when i heard trisha got pregnant there's no way on so many ways but at the same time it just feels right all of a sudden i just felt a sense of purpose like i just felt like my life felt a sense of purpose that's another thing she has a sense of purpose and again this is considered normal in society people say their their purpose is their kids so um whenever i hear somebody say that in the back of my head i'm like so did you not did your life not mean anything before the kids is that how you felt about yourself I know that's how Trisha feels about herself because she's told us several times. This child will give her life a sense of meaning and purpose that she's unable to find on her own. I don't relate to that. I'm sorry. I don't I don't relate because a lot of people actually feel this way. Not just Trisha. I think for Trisha it means something deeper, but A lot of people feel like they didn't have meaning or purpose before their kids. I don't know. That's like, like, that, that's, that's weird to me. My life is just starting is how it feels. So this, um, Trisha's video is like, pretty long. Um, I mean, she's just chatting, she's just chatting about her pregnancy. I mean, let's see. This happens. Yeah. And pretty crazy. it's out of love, which is so beautiful. Like, I just, you know, I get, I think it's all God's timing. I think I wanted to be pregnant by so many different people, which you feel like that sounds bad, but sometimes I just want to be pregnant just to be pregnant. Well, the part that sounded bad, she thinks it sounds bad to say, I want to be pregnant just to be pregnant, um, which I, yeah, that's, to me, that's weird. It's like, mm. Okay, don't forget that there's a human being that you're ushering into the world too. <laughs> but the part that sounded bad was that Trisha said that she has been trying to get pregnant by people who didn't love her or want to have a child with her. Th- that is what sounds bad. That's weird. Which is it's totally fine on to itself, but... We can tell. The fact that I have Moses, my husband, who is just so... <laughs> my husband... Pearl Swell's just, Trisha is loving being able to say my husband. She she is loving it and she says it every chance that she gets. It's kind of funny to me. Caring and loving. That's Pearl, he's Pearl so is laughing. Like, and it's, always make sure I'm okay. That I just know he's going to be the best father in the whole world. Like I just know it. I just know it. And I'm just so thankful that, you know, we're both excited about this. I think maybe in the past, if I would have pregnant, maybe my partners would have been as excited or something. I don't know. It's so weird. You wanted to get pregnant so bad that you didn't care. You wouldn't care that the father would be unhappy that you're pregnant. Like for me, it's one thing to say, Hey, I want to get pregnant and I'll raise it. I'll raise the child myself. That's one thing. But to, I can't imagine a scenario that Trisha's trying to get pregnant by some guy who doesn't want to impregnate her. I can't imagine that in any positive way. I just know it's all timing. And um, I don't know, we've already like looked at nurseries. and I mean, That's another thing I don't relate to. A whole room for a baby a whole room decorated too. Like you spent money, you painted, you spent effort, you painted the walls, you bought paint, you bought paintings. I don't actually painting the walls, painting, stuff like that. Okay. It makes sense to me because you know, the child needs sensory 
you know, sensations. You need to look at stuff. Okay, cool. Um, you bought furnitures. Like you bought a chair, you bought a couch, you bought you bought like extra stuff. Girl, I don't know. I just don't relate. Like it's a baby. It and he's a crib and uh area can change its diapers and it's their diapers. And um that's about it. Like like I would I would have the crib right next to me. Like I would get a crib with wheels and just roll the baby next to me. I don't know. Like I don't need a whole room. I don't I just don't relate. I don't and that's and the money. I just can't deal with that that money. That money you're spending on a chair some special chair that the baby don't is not gonna the baby's not gonna sit on. Oh no, it's for me. It's to rock the baby to sleep. Okay. I guess, girl. I don't know. I just don't relate. I imagine when I have my first child. Um. That the sh- the stuff will go where it goes. I. <laughs> I don't care to have a designated room. The more I talk about it, the more I'm like, oh, it kind of makes sense. You can turn that nursery into the child's own room. And be sentimental about it. Just not for me. We already know our names. Like, we knew in our hearts the names of our babies, if it's a boy or girl. And um, just so... <laughs> I'm so sorry. I did not know why it's, this is on I think it's... <laughs> I'm so sorry. Ooh, baby. Um, I think it's because... It, it's like she's not under... Oh, I don't want to say understanding, but okay, okay. actually, I mean, she has the money to really like do it the way uh, yeah, honestly okay. anybody would want to do it, like the way I would want to do it, for example. But I think people downplay how difficult it is to have a child, bring a child into the world. Like, it's a mm-hmm. beautiful thing, don't get me wrong, but there's also a very negative part that I see in mo- mothers that they either tend to hide, they try to, you know, they don't want to talk about it. Postpartum depression is something a lot of people oh, yeah. are very, like, wary of discussing publicly. That's another thing that I'm like, y'all don't think about that? Y'all don't think about postpartum depression? Like, it can be bad. There, Gabrielle Bernstein, she's an author. She talks about law of attraction stuff, and she used to be kind of anti-medication. Um, and that's, like, one of the reasons I stopped listening to her, because I'm like, girl, you don't know what you're talking about. She's suffered from substance substance abuse. So I'm just like, how have you struggled with substance abuse? You've been to rehab and like you are talking about mental health medication like you don't know it's useful. She got postpartum depression. She couldn't believe it. She there she was like, there is no amount of manifestation. There is no amount of positive affirmations I could do. And she started taking Lexapro. She was like, it changed, It saved my life. It saved me. I, I was on my wits and I was about to end it all. And I will never again. She apologized. I don't remember whose podcast that she apologized, but she apologized on someone's podcast. Like, I will never, I will never say bad things about mental health medication ever again. So I was like, damn, it's that, it's that bad? Postpartum depression, huh? That's what, that's what finally made you understand other people's realities <laughs> that like it's not all of us that can just say positive affirmations and everything goes our way <laughs> we just run out. but yeah how does it not scare people like there's so much scary and and trisha's not black but if you're a black woman that's another thing to be scared of apparently we die apparently we die at a higher rate it doesn't matter your education level it doesn't matter your income level it's just like if you are a black woman, you're you're you increase like it is. It's so many things to think about. It's like when people are like, oh, my God, oh, my God, pregnancy. Oh, my God. I'm like. <laughs> I'm just like. Mm. Yo, it's like so much. It's so much. It's so expensive. It's so it's so scary to me. It's scary. Um. And now I'm like, this thing is so complicated, but 
and yet again, people are pushing out babies in fields. Like if you watch the in Anna, they're pushing, they're squatting in fields. They're pushing out babies in fields. They're not special. But for real, people are people are pushing out babies in <laughs> in the middle of a river bend. There's a YouTube video. I swear to God, I have this YouTube video saved of this woman. She was pregnant, and she was like, oh, it's time for the baby to come out. And she just went to the river, and all the kids were frolicking in the grass. Like, they were setting up a picnic, and she just pushed that baby out, like, oh. And the kids came over, like, oh, here's your new brother. I was like, excuse excuse me? The YouTube video was, like, 30, 40 minutes long. So I'm like, you were in labor for 40 minutes excuse, excuse, in the river? <laughs> excuse me and then there's this other youtube video this one this one is like an hour long she the woman was in the middle of uh, doing the dishes and she's like oh it's time and she just turned around she just turned around like this (laughs) the husband just in the doorway recording like you you really just gonna push this baby out and then finish the dishes (laughs) Right. So I see stuff like that where I'm like, okay, but then like when you read, when you actually read medical literature, it's like, okay, girl, the more I talk about this, the more I'm like, I need to have a savings account just for the surrogate mother. Um, there are some people that can do it. However, you know, that, that's just another piece of the, the, the pie that I feel like, you know, not, not everybody's realizing, uh, is there like, and how is Trisha Paytas of all people not scared of postpartum depression like as as many mental issues as she has how do you not well you know listen she's she's in a joyous mood she's in a joyous state she'll think about it when she thinks about it but I'm just like how do you not how do you have mental health issues and not be like I need to prepare for this do we um, eat that piece of the pie? Are we leaving that piece? Do we not care about that piece of the pie? Is it not your flavor? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so well, I think I feel like Trisha's just gonna repeat herself. Giving me this like fifteenth chance in life. Fifteen. <laughs> you know, she said, my life "Look at those nine lives. Look at fifteen. Thankful for everything and every person I've experienced." Okay, so we have the baby in September. Uh, we can theoretically get pregnant again in December and have a baby in next September. Damn. <laughs> like, um, because I'm older and he's older, you know, we just are ready to go. We take- well, listen, that's another reason why I need to have a surrogate. I don't know why I didn't think about it. Like, I was talking to my friend. She was talking about how, like, she just wants to go to the sperm bank and have a child by herself. I'm like, okay. Um, I was like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do because I want five kids. Okay, I want five kids. I know. In today's day and age, that's a lot of kids. I want five kids. Um, I feel, and listen, I haven't even had the one. Some, some people are like, nope, you're going to change your mind after you have that one? Mm-mm. You, you ain't going to want to have five kids. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> this is all theory in my head, and... Once the theory goes into practice, obviously, changes will be made. But theoretically, I want five kids. Um, I have this whole philosophy and reasoning behind it. And um, I was like, oh, what if I do in vitro? And he gives me twins. And then the surrogate mother does in vitro. And she has twins or triplets. (laughs) I'm like planning, like, how do we plan this out? How do we plan this out? But um yeah it's a time of life where you you are planning it out you are thinking about it um here's the other thing I want to mention before I log off here um you don't need to have kids like that is a perfectly fine reality as well you don't need to have kids I know, like, there is a zeitgeist right now, um, discussion, especially in the online black community of, um, you know, women need to have kids, women need, women need to be married and have kids, blah, blah, blah. Um, screw them. Like, go, go with your gut. This is not something to take lightly. This is not, 
like having kids because some podcasts told you to have kids having kids because that's what they did in the 1950s and they were smile they were smiling they're smiling in those pictures so maybe that was the right thing like having kids because somebody else told you to that's not right um have kids because you feel ready and if you are old and you don't feel ready that's fine that is fine like literally live your life like literally live your life, <laughs> literally live your life. I know for me personally, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So what I'm doing in the meantime is stacking my papers. So if by the time I know it's like geriatric pregnancy, I have options. You got to stack your, you, if you want to have options, you need to have money. You need to stack your paper somehow, some way. Girl, life is so interesting. But anyway, that's my reaction to Trisha. Um, I don't like her personally, but she she's bringing up something that I've noticed a lot of women discussing lately. And I thought, hey, it's worth the reaction. It's worth talking about. Um... Even though I don't like Trisha, I'm, it's good to see her like genuinely smile. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever seen her smile this real and genuine before. Um, and all I can hope is that she's blessed with wisdom and healing and, you know, blessings to the future child. Um, but in terms of what this speaks to me. It really brings up questions for me of what are what are the different motivations people have in have in having children? Are people having children ready to embrace whatever comes out? Right, like in Encanto, Abuela was not ready to embrace whatever child came out. Mm mm. Mar Mirabel didn't have no gift. I was watching, Encanto was the movie I watched when I did my K-Booster. And the first scene of Encanto is Mirabel as a little girl. And Abuela's just talking to her like, oh, Mirabel, you are, you are a wonder, Mirabel. You are, you are amazing, Mirabel. Oh, my gosh. Mirabel, mi amor, mi vida. Oh like loving this baby and I'm just sitting there watching it's like that's the last time Abuela had anything that's the last time Mirabel heard anything endearing or loving from Abuela since that ceremony like what would that what would what, what, oh my gosh what would that be like you are five years old and this ceremony completely outside of your control you have no absolutely no control over what happens in this ceremony you don't get a gift. An abuela is no longer calling you mi vida, mi amor. Oh, mira, bellicita. Pobrecita. No, no more. No more love from abuela. You are five years old. You did not meet expectations at five years old. And you had no control. Like, no, for real. That would mess you up. That will mess up some people. That will, that will mess up some people bad. Like, bad, bad. Like... Like, I kind of feel like Abuela, you're lucky Mirabella ain't out here wilding out. There are some people, if something like that happened to them, they will be out here wilding out. Uh, Mirabelle, 15 years old, wilding out. A hot, a hot mess. Like, I just feel like Abuela, you need to count your stars that you don't have your son wilding and your granddaughter wilding. Like, you need to count your damn blessings, girl. It could be so much, but like, that's how I feel like sometimes I'm like, do you ever feel like that? Like growing up, you get in trouble for something and you just like, this is what you want to, this is, this is the hill you choose to die on. You know, there's people, you know, I could be like a uh, Ruby Bennett. <laughs> if, you watch, if you watch Euphoria, I could be like Ruby Bennett out here running around playing street frogger, leap of leap of frog with police. I could be out here doing some gang ish you know i could be i could be out here <laughs> i could be out here stacking 
stacking weight. What do you call it? Like stacking lines on my on my criminal record. I could be out here. I could be out here like causing all kinds of mayhem and trouble for you. But but this is the hill you want to die on. You you want to get mad at me for on some BS. That's how I felt. <laughs> I just feel like you need to you need to praise God for what you have. I could go on and on. But yeah, that's my reaction to Trisha Paytas. Um Let me know your thoughts in the in the description, in the description, in the comment section. Because this is something that I'm sure there's so many different opinions, right? There's people who are like, we need to stop. There's people who are like, um, we need to stop talking about her pregnancy. Here's here's my take on that. Um, we're talking about her pregnancy because she's publicly telling us details of her pregnancy. Yo, like what y'all need to understand is Trisha Paytas wants you in her life. <laughs> like, do y'all not under, do y'all not notice by now? Trisha Paytas doesn't feel like she's real unless she's recording it and people are commenting on it. This is this is part of the Trisha Paytas ecosystem. Um, people will not be talking about it at at length if she was not making video and video about it this is going to be her content by the way for y'all who want to cancel trisha she ain't gonna be canceled because now she's gonna be a mommy vlogger she ain't gonna be canceled y'all i'm sorry to tell you i'm sorry to tell you but yeah so like i understand that people are like this is gross don't talk about her pregnancy but like we finna talk about public figures especially we finna talk about what the public figure is clearly wanting us to talk about we don't talk about it right like Kanye West is putting blessing his business some people are like it's not it's not our business like we need to stop talking about Kanye but he wants us to know that he don't like Skeeteroo that he don't like <laughs> do you get what I'm saying that's my take on it but let me know your take in the comments below. If you have nothing to say, just leave the paw print emoji. And that's how we know that you're here. And you know what I'm going to try to do? I'm going to actually try to reply to every comment. I usually heart comments, but I want to actually like give words <laughs> of affirmation. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Thanks for watching. Hanging out with me for 52 minutes. I mean, you could have been doing anything else. Shoot. Shoot. I could. I got stuff to do. I got stuff to do. These contacts are pretty comfortable. I'm impressed. I'm impressed, Color CL. Color Color Addict. I think that's the name of the brand. I'm impressed. But um, yeah, leave a paw print emoji if you have nothing else to say. I will respond to comments. Thanks for watching. Until next time, much love, much luck. Peace out. Yo, where's my mouse? Where, where you go? There you go.